Hey, good morning. So I have so much stuff coming out of the garden. Please excuse the mess. But today I'm going to show you how to do tinctures. Tinctures? Sorry, can't really say that word. Um, I do have some dried herbs and then I have some fresh ones that I'm going to do. So the, for the fresh ones, of course you want to wash them, make sure that there's no buggies on them. And then let them dry because you don't want any water. In, in this tincture so I'm just going to kind of wash these off. Now in this one I have nasturtium. Um, I've got the flowers and the leaves and then in this one I have catnip. Now, you can rinse them off and lay them out in the sun for a little bit and let them kind of dry. And actually, I think that's what I'm going to do. And then when I come back, I will I'm gonna set these out on the back um, picnic table. And then when I come back, I'll kind of go over a little bit about tinctures and then we'll get started. So, tinctures can be used for many different things. Um, I am not a medical professional. I do not have a doctor's degree. I am not a doctor, so um, if you're going to do these, make sure you do your research. If you are on any prescription medication for anything, um, it is always recommended to speak to your primary care provider about different herbs and things like that to make sure it's not going to mess with your current medication and, you know, whatever your it is that you're taking, that way there's no interference. So. The book that I've used, as you can see, for a while, I got the Herbal Medicine for Beginners. This is by Katja Swift and Ryan Madura. Um, I've been using this book for quite a while. It's a little beat up. But today, I'm going to show you how I'm going to make tinctures out of, it is super easy, out of mint, nasturtium, and catnip. And so I'm just going to kind of um, explain to you what those are good for and then what I use them for. So catnip, believe it or not, uh, you know, when your cats smell the catnip or whatever, it makes them go all crazy and they get all like happy and excited. For dogs, it's actually a sedative. It makes them sleepy. And we have uh, one dog here that has a really hard time at night. So we give her catnip, but she um, doesn't like the smell of it or the taste. So getting it down her is quite tricky. Well, if you have a tincture, then I can just give it to her in her mouth and it's over and done with and she relaxes. Um, but it's also good for adults who also have, you know, different, different things. So um, catnip is ideal for dressing ADD and ADHD, anxiety, fever, food sensitivities, heartburn reflux, and gastroesophageal reflux, or GERD, IBS, IBD, ulcerative colitis, indigestion, leaky gut, and nausea. What we use catnip for other than um, to help the dog sleep is for heartburn. My son suffers severely from really bad heartburn. So that is what we use the catnip for. Um, nasturtium, I'm, you can do it with the flowers or the leaves or both. I'm using both today. Um, that is a natural antibiotic. So that's what we use that for. And then the mint is, let me get to the mint real quick. You know, and get you a good book. Oh, it's not in this book. 
I have a few different things that I use. Oh, I bet you it's under pepper in it. Yep. Okay. So mint is good for arthritis, bites and stings, bloating, burns and sunburn, fever, food sensitivities, IBS, IBD, ulcerative colitis, indigestion, leaky gut, muscle soreness, and nausea. So if you noticed, like the catnip and the peppermint do some of the similar things. So for indigestion and nausea and heartburn, if you do peppermint and catnip together, the peppermint kind of helps the flavor of the catnip and you kind of get both both things for it. So um, as soon as those are dried, I've got them laid out on a, on a picnic table um, to dry out. And as soon as those are dry, we will come back. And I'm not drying them all the way. I'm just drying them enough to get the water off of them. We'll come back and I will show you how easy it is to make a tincture. Okay, let's try this again. I did the mint. The camera wasn't recording. So, all right. So this one is the catnip. And what you're going to do, you know, I washed it. I let it sit outside and dry for, I don't know, probably about an hour. So you take your fresh herb, whether you're doing mint or catnip, calendula, anything like that. You want to, if you're doing the fresh herbs, you want to chop it. Now you can do just the leaves. I do the leaves and the stems. But if you want to do just leaves, you can. You know, some plants, it's the root. Um, most plants, it's the root uh, leaves, stems. So there's a lot of different ones. But that's why I say you want to definitely get you a good book. You know, and take the time to read it. It's instead of just like looking up recipes. Because I learned an awful lot when I first started reading the herbal medicine one. And you can use them. You know, as a reference, if you're like, you know, I don't remember if this happens, what do I do? But, okay, so that's nice and chopped up. So now, gonna get you a scale. And let me zero it out. Or actually, I say put it on the right unit. It's not milliliters. There we go. Okay, now I can zero it out. There we go. Okay, so when you're doing this, zero, it's going to be one ounce of dried herbs to five liquid ounces of vodka. And you can use the expensive vodka, you can use the really cheap vodka, you can use the one that's eh, kind of in the middle. It all depends on you, your preference, your budget. Like, I'm not going to make tinctures out of Grey Goose. Okay, so this is all the catnip. And it looks like we have right at... just a tad bit over so I'm going to put a little bit more than five so it, like I said it's five liquid ounces and really with where we're at I think I'll put it right at about six now you will run into this sometimes where it doesn't quite cover it all it is okay to add extra to make sure it covers it, especially with dried herbs, because the dry herbs will expand. Um, I've seen where people have taken, you know, like with their fresh herbs, 
they'll go, you know, three quarters of the way and dry herbs will go halfway because the dry ones will expand. But, you know, and it's not an exact ratio. The standard is the one to five. So this one was a little bit over, so I kind of guessed it about six. Okay, so that would have been a total of six. Eight ounces. I could probably could have used a small, smaller jar, so I'll probably move this to a littler jar. And actually, yeah, let me go get a smaller jar and let's see, because this looks a little funny. That way you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I got a smaller jar. So I'm going to transfer this over. Much better. Okay. So you want to make sure you have enough liquid to cover it. And since it's dry, see if I stir it. There's plenty in there. So this ended up being eight ounces of vodka. You can do this with a brandy. I never have because the vodka doesn't have an odor or a taste. Okay. So after you get it in your jar, you're going to put on a lid because you want it airtight. And just kind of shake it around. Now one of the most important things to do so that you don't lose all your good stuff is one, have a marker handy. Ah, there it is. Okay, so for instance, I have a calendar. So for both of these, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write what they are. So this one is catnip. I'm going to put today's date. And then I'm going to count six weeks. You do this, you'll leave it like this for four to six weeks. I do six weeks, so I'm going to count six weeks. So November, that wasn't right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, November 6th will be the six week mark. So I'm going to put 11, 6, 22. That way I know the day I did it and the day that it's finished. Once, preferably twice a day, you're just going to kind of go over, shake it, and then put it back on your shelf. You want to keep it in a cool, dry, uh, cool, dark place. So don't put it like in the cabinet above like your stove. Um, your pantry is fine, a dark, a dark cubby, something like that for, for six weeks. Now, once you get to your six week mark, what you'll do is you'll take your, your jar, I'm just gonna use this one as an example, put you a strainer, a really fine strainer, or a cheesecloth, or muslin, muslin cloth, put that in there, and you're gonna strain everything off. And then, like for instance, this one is the catnip, the leftover catnip, I can just go throw it in the compost. What I'm wanting is the liquid. And if you have a dropper bottle, one dropper, I believe the dropper is usually like one, one ml, um, that's what you're going to use is, a, is the dropper bottle. Or you can buy those little cobalt blue or brown bottles that already have a little dropper in it and you can transfer it into there. But I'm going to make, because I'm making such big jars of this stuff, I'm going to go ahead and put it in these. When it's ready, I will put some, um, once you strain everything out, it'll probably fit in a jar, you know, this size. So I will put some in one of the dropper bottles, and then I'll just have my refill there. As long as it's kept in a cool, dark area, 
they can last like up to five years. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the nasturtium done. Like I said, that one we use as, a, as an antibiotic. Um, I can't stress enough that if you guys are going to get into tinctures, or maybe you're already into them and you're just learning different ones, um, please, if you were taking prescription medication, you speak with your primary doctor before adding something to your regiment. But anyway, hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit us up on Instagram, and we will catch you on the next video.